Hello, my YouTube friends. Those of you who watch my videos on a regular basis know that I like to create Kimikomi ornaments. This is a very old craft that originated in Japan. I have many videos on creating my Kimikomi ornaments and I will leave the links below. I use many types of embroidery when creating my ornaments. For example, this one is mostly ribbon embroidery. This lilac ornament is a combination of ribbon embroidery and seed beading. One of my favorites is this silver ornament. For creation of this ornament I used needle felting and I will leave a link above for the video of creation of this ornament and beading. This ball is created by using a lot of golden thread and beads. It's just embroidery with wool thread. This Kimikomi ball is also a very interesting techniques that I used and I will leave a link above to watch the video where I create this Kimikomi ornament. This ornament is created using ribbon and bead embroidery but also I used a ribbon that I bought at Michael's to create a portion of the design and it's very useful when someone doesn't know how to embroider at all and I will leave a link for creation of this ornament above and below. This is the ribbon that I used for some of the segments of my design. This pink ornament is partially embroidery, ribbon embroidery, and cuts out from the ribbon. This particular ribbon. So these two examples show that sometimes we can create beautiful ornaments using ribbons that we can buy. Today I am going to create a new Kimikomi ornament using two methods. I will use cut out portions of the ribbon and I will show you which ribbon. And as in this design, I will use needle felting technique. Let me now show you my materials for the creation of a new Kimikomi ornaments. These are some of the materials I will be using for the creation of my Kimikomi ornament. This is the smooth foam ball with this diameter that I always use for my crafts. In one of my videos I showed how I divide this ball into eight sections because each of my Kimikomi ornaments has eight 
segments or panels. Four of one type and four of another design. I will use this metallic thread for both types of panels. This beautiful ribbon I will use to cut out some details of my design. Portions of this transparent ribbon I will be also using. My panels will be cut out from these felt sheets. This is my template that show me the approximate size of each panel. These little white balls have these sparkling elements which I will use and I will show you how I cut them and uh, needle felting them. And sequins and beads will be used extensively in both types of the panels. The wool of various blue shades and purple shades will be used to create the background on the panels using needle felting technique. And these are the main tools that I will be using. This office knife to cut the ball into the segments as I showed in my previous videos. And uh, this kit is for many purposes but also for tucking in the fabric into the ball. So this is the main tool. I will start off by tracing my template and I use a piece of old soap and you can use special fabric pen or anything you like to use but I'm using just <laughs> traditional soap my next task will be to cut out those pieces or panels leaving approximately one and a half centimeters on all edges so I have enough fabric to tuck in into the ball and cut off the excess of felt as needed. I cut out my panels and they are ready to be used. I need eight segments or panels as I said before, four for each design. This is the design for the first four panels. And we can create this design in six steps. The first step should be to create the background for our panel. Something like this. And we will use a needle felting technique and I will show you quickly how we create this background. I started creating the background on the lower portion of my segment and I am just pulling the wool and doing the layers and the down portion should be just all white wool. On the upper portion of my panel I used various shades of blue and purples to create my background and you should not worry that everything should be exactly the same on each panel the background they can vary and the ornament will be more interesting with slight variations of the background on each panel so this probably is enough in terms of the amount of wool or the layer of uh, the wool. If needed, I will add more. Now I will start 
needle felting. I placed my panel on a pad and this is the thickness of the pad. It's, I believe, uh, two inches thickness. And this is my tool. And I will start doing those steps. I noticed that it will take me approximately 15 minutes to create the background for each panel. This is my rough surface. I did not finish it yet. I need to use the needle more and how I would know that I am done. You are done when you are looking and the surface is smooth and no wool filaments are sticking out from the surface. I finished my background and if we look carefully at both panels we will see the design is slightly different but as I said it's even beneficial because our ornament will look more attractive and more interesting. Next step will be to cut out beautiful fir trees from our ribbon. For my lower portions I will use these two trees on the left with three present boxes. I will also cut the right tree and I will use it for the upper group of trees. And finally these two trees in front of the truck will be cut out as well. I placed my cut out details on the panel to see how they fit because we really need to watch the edges. And also I left a little bit of space on each side of my design. After I prepared my ribbon details I attach them with needles to the panel because now I need to do those piles of snow so called. I will cut these balls into flat portions and will use the needle to fold them to my panel. These are my small portions and I try to keep those sparkling filaments. I position them below my trees and now I will use my needle to fasten them. And in a few minutes my piles of snow are done. Now I will do the same procedure between the above trees and below trees. This step is finished. My next step was to sew trees using this silver thread and of course a needle to my panel using these small stitches. So I sew at the edges of my cutouts. The last two steps are very easy. I cut out these sparkling details from this transparent ribbon and I will sew them at the bottom of my design like that. Top I will sew the beads and that will be it. And my panel is finished. This is the design for my second type of panels, four of them.
and again I will start off with creating the background and in the background it will be mostly wool in blue and purple shades. Now I will use my needle to attach my wool to the felt. The background is created. Now I will show you which materials I will be using. I will use two types of sequin, those sparkling ones and in the snowflake shape. I will use crystal beads and this metallic silver thread. Therefore, similar segments on the panel. Sequin and the garland with crystals. Let me show you how I do the first portion out of four. And everything else will be the same. Only the garlands will go in different directions. First, I attach the snowflake sequin using those stitches. I place this silver sequin on the top and now I will do similar stitches going through the middle, the hole of the sequin. The second set of stitches is done and I also did additional stitches, not going through the hole, but just to make this snowflake look more real. Using the same thread, I did the foundation for the garland and I will attach my crystals. And also, I will do a lot of double French knots to create more action on the panel. And double French knots is very easy to do. You just weave the thread two times around the needle and push it through, holding the longer end of the thread. And that's all. This is the first section and it's mostly done. More double French knots I will add on the very top of my design. My panel is ready and actually all panels are now ready. I embroidered all of them so I can proceed of assembling the ornament. I already divided this foam ball into eight sections or segments <coughs> and in one of my videos that I provided the links for before, I showed the process. And a few sections are already done. I tucked in all my panels. And again, I used this tool and just I tacked where the sections were separated. And I showed the process in one of my videos. And the last step, I always use braids or ribbons to separate those seams. And I believe that provide additional decoration to my ornament. In my case, I use two types of ribbons. First, I will tuck in this ribbon and you really really need to push the tip of your instrument to help you to tuck it between the panels and maybe go along a few times let me do this and i started on the top really pushing the tip of my tool into the seams between the panels, which I did with the help of my office knife. And I will go all the way down, 
pushing and pushing, tucking and tucking. I will finish on the other side of the ball on the bottom. And I need to tuck in a little bit more here. And finally, I will use the second type of ribbon to go in the middle. And I will tuck this ribbon only on both ends on the tops. So I attach it here and then I will just run it along the middle of my other ribbon and attach on the other end. And my ornament is done. Let me put it on display and I will show it from every angle. I'm so excited that I added one more Kimikomi ornament to my collection. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed watching this video. Write comments and let me know what color my next Kimikomi ornament should be. And most of all, please subscribe to my channel.